Hello, hello. We are live. How are you, Miss Sherry? Good. I hope you had a good Christmas. I did. I missed being live on Monday, but enjoyed the holiday, enjoyed some downtime with family, and really excited uh, for tonight. I am really excited tonight, too, um, because uh, I am, you know, reversing my type 2 diabetes. So, and I have a couple clients that uh, have cancer. So this is going to tie right into um, my, you know, what I'm excited to hear uh, our guest speaker to, uh, to talk about. So um, do you want to go ahead and introduce? Let's, <laughs> let's get going. I'm excited. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's bring him on the stage and do a proper introduction here. So I had the privilege of first meeting uh, Professor Brian Peskin in Salt Lake City this year. And that was my first actual, you know, uh, crossing, um, I guess I should say. I've heard YouTubes. Uh, one of my mentors, Ben Azadi, did a YouTube with um, Professor Brian Peskin like three years ago, I think. It's been a while ago. But my first actual, you know, sitting and listening in uh, person with him was in Salt Lake City at the Live It to Lead It conference. Um, and technically, my first actual run in with him was in the courtyard of the hotel, right? He's out, you know, running through, doing run through of his presentation. And here I am out doing my thing, doing my grounding, uh, wearing my blue blockers, you know, looking like um, and walking back and forth across the courtyard. And and he just simply, you know, in passing was like, what are you grounding? I'm like, yep, absolutely. Every morning, you know, it's just it's one of my non non-negotiables. But beyond that, Mr. Brian Peskin is a research scientist. He specializes in lipids. And that is one of the reasons why we brought him on here. Um, he focuses more in regards to the plant source uh, seed oils and the um specifically the modulation of the targeted uh, essential fatty acids. So it has been termed the parent, uh, parent essential oil. He has several articles. He has actually published three books amongst many other things in regards to uh, the parent essential oils and their meta uh, metabolites in cancer, cardiovascular disease. He really focuses on uh, the pathways when it comes to maximizing the oxygen delivery to the blood flow. Um, his mission definitely aligns with ours, which is to heal and prevent inflammation as well as, um, the diverse patient population, as far as diseases and disorders that are happening. And it is strongly on the rise. So welcome to our healing the whole body podcasts. Thanks Brian, for having me. Are you? Absolutely. It is our pleasure. Um, you know, I guess the biggest thing, um, or I, the, the place that we should start is the big, the biggest worm, right? Which is the essential fatty acids in the parent essential oils. Um, that's kind of, kind of your wheelhouse. Yeah. I specialize in it. So I'm basically a theoretical physiologist specializing in optimizing cellular immunity. And this is all I do. It's, it's been 25 years of this. So I stay there. But it expands to other things because people ask all kinds of questions. But that's where I stay focused. And it's like the center of the circle. So when you go from the center out, you're always on the circumference. If you're out, you try and go in, you miss the boat. Biggest problem today with oils is everywhere you look, a bunch of parrots are just saying plant-based seed oils are horrible. And they miss the adjective. Processed, adulterated seed oils are hazardous. They're known to cause heart disease. They're known to cause cancer. What none of these people tell you is the body needs a ton of parent omega-6. There's two type of oils, parent omega-6, parent omega-3. One cannot be made from the other in humans. In other animals, they can, but in humans, they're called essential. So they have to come from food and one does not convert to the other. So there's two separate things. Doesn't matter the technical definitions of them. I call it parent omega-6, parent omega-3, linolic acid, alpha linolenic acid. You know, it's chemistry. There's different number of double bonds and it, it gets technical. The biggest thing is those two stay in the cell membrane 
Why do you care? Because there's a hundred trillion cells in everybody. Hundred trillion. And in every cell membrane, it's called the bilipid membrane. It's a layer of fat, lipids. And of that, the ratio of parent omega-6 to parent omega-3 is four to one in most organs like the heart, the liver, the kidneys, six and a half to one in the muscles, 100 to one in the brain, 20, 22 to one in the fat stores. So the body wants a ton more parent omega-6, even in breast milk, 10 to 1 parent omega-6 to omega-3. So anybody telling you we're overdosed on omega-6, you need all this 333, tell them to get their tail into a medical library and read some physiology books before they open their mouths. That's completely un true they don't know what they're talking about so i only give science i don't care about opinion opinions for art politics anything else but this is your body this is your health someone is giving you the wrong information you can die if you listen to it and with fish oil it's happening so you have the parent omega-6 parent omega-3 a quarter to a third of every cell membrane is made of these. Now the cell membrane is half fat, half protein. It's virtually no carbohydrate in the cell membrane. So of the half fat, 25 to 33 percent is direct parent omega-6 and parent omega-3, about six to one in the parent omega-6 favorable state. So you need a lot of omega-6. Parent omega-3 is found in very few foods like nuts will have it. You'll always hear the Seventh-day Advents. Oh, they're so healthy because they're getting the omega-3 from the walnuts. Well, if you care to research what's the ratio in there, it's five times more parent omega-6 than parent omega-3. So it's the parent omega-6 that's giving them the benefits. Fish oil is derivative of parent omega-3. So you have the parents up here and the offspring are down here. And the offspring are bigger. So it gets longer and longer. They start out 18 chain, they go to 20, 24, they get longer. DHA, EPA are not essential. You'll get another ton of people telling you those are EFAs, they are not. If you get the parent omega-3, your body will make the parent conversion to DHA and EPA just fine. And they've done experiments giving vegetarians that eat no fish, can they convert the parent omega-3 in their food to the omega-6? And the answer was yes. None of them were deficient. So this is in the medical journals. They've studied this. Virtually everything is known. We don't need more experiments, studies. We need to understand what the heck is already out there. And this is the problem. Nutrition is like a merry-go-round. What's right today is wrong tomorrow. And then it goes back 20 years later. It's like the high carb, low carb thing. You know martinis and whipped cream if you look at some of the books on my bookshelf calories don't count martinis and whipped cream this was in the 50s early 60s when they had the low carb thing and it worked just great and then it went out of favor all the nutritionists said high carb and we'll talk about how bad they are because carbs equal sugar and the misleading by people that are in the health field is disgusting my joke about nutritionists is most of them aren't qualified to talk about nutrition. They are like political scientists. They're like political nutritionists. They don't really know any science. They just memorize garbage. So here's the problem they made with how much of this stuff do you need? DHA, EPA, and fish oil, they give massive dosages. I've never seen anybody calculate what dose are you supposed to get? Well, the answer is when they did studies years ago with chromatography, it wasn't real good. So they thought all of the parents went to the derivatives. So all the parent omega-6, omega-3 would go to the derivatives of it. And the omega-6 side, GLA is a derivative, arachidonic acid is a derivative. So they get bigger and bigger down the chain but they thought all the parents would go to derivatives. And this was mistakenly, they thought about 37 to 50% did. 
it's actually less than half a percent. So it's next to nothing goes to the derivatives because the derivatives are so powerful. And that's what they all miss. And I never hear anybody get it correctly. So you need very little of the fish oil. For example, in a thousand milligram capsule, there's 60% DHA, EPA, 600 milligrams. Nobody's asked how much does the brain use a day? The answer is seven milligrams. That's in a big brain person. It goes between two and a half to seven milligrams. So picture a 300 pound guy needs a seven milligrams. 600 milligrams divided by seven. You're getting 20 to 500 times overdose of DHA, the fish oil component, daily. To put that in perspective, take 100 aspirin and call me in the morning. Of course, I'm being facetious. Don't do it. You'll be dead. You'll bleed. <laughs> Which I but think was one of the biggest things also when I heard you speaking live, that yeah. was the biggest light bulb because many of us are told, you know, take four of your fish oil capsules a day, right? Well, take this day. bulk and yeah, you're yeah. like, it's yeah, 50 yeah. to four, 500 four, four, times 4, the milligrams, amount. Four grams. It's <laughs> and, called a super pharmacological uh, overdose. Yeah. So you go, Brian, but the, but, but the brain has it. Study after study, taking more DHA does nothing. There's seven, Dr. Rowan sent me this, co-author of PEO Solution, mm -hmm. my last book, seven landlocked countries. None of them have visual acuity problems, mental acuity problems, no acuity problems, proving body can make the derivatives on the omega-3 side just fine. But nobody talks about this. So there's no fish oil deficiency look in the mirror people if you don't see something with gills looking back at you it's not applicable to you fish oil is antifreeze for a fish fish typically lives in very cold water 30 35 40 degrees and nature would only have two ways alcohol doesn't freeze you throw a rock in the freezer it doesn't freeze to an ice cube stays liquid so nature could have alcohol in the fish so it doesn't freeze. Well, you'd have a drunk fish, so that's not going to fly. So the long chain fatty acids are what nature uses. And what's shocking, Dr. Rowan showed me this one too, the warm water fish living in 70 degrees has 14 times less DHA, EPA in it than the cold water fish. What are we doing? We're not living in frigid temperature. We're 72 Fish oil goes rancid spontaneously at 72 degrees. This is why in your supermarket, you walk by the fish section, unless they're covering up the fish, you'll get that smell. You know, mm -hmm. the oil is going bad. Now you go, well, how can it go bad in the body? Well, you have antioxidants, but here's the problem. All the antioxidants the brain is supposed to have, for example, goes, ah, the idiot took this supplement this based on nothing. And yep. now we have an overdose in the bloodstream. We better get down there or this guy's going to die. All the antioxidants are used to solve the problem of stupidity in people. And now your brain is unprotected. Gee, do we have any results of that? Alzheimer's dementia are through the roof. We never used to have much of this. You'd have the odd one, uh, you know, 50 years ago before this fish oil garbage. But it goes spontaneously bad. This is another reason why skin cancer through the roof. Well, I didn't use, or I did use suntan lotion. I did stay out of the sun. How the heck did I get skin cancer? Because it's the heat. You, you, the skin has no DHA, EPA, or parent omega-3 in it. It's all omega-6. So what happens is you take this pharmacologic overdose, the skin is forced to incorporate it. Remember, I just told you the mm -hmm. temperature, 70 degrees, it goes spontaneously bad. Well, you're in the you sun, burn. your skin can hit 100. That's the age spot. That's skin cancer and why the dermatologists don't have a clue what to do. So talking about the omega-6, the importance of it, all of your skin's 100% parent omega-6. Fingernails, parent omega-6. Most women have ridges in their fingernails and the fingernails break all the time. Mine never do. Anybody taking the oils I recommend never do. The fingernails are like glass and they're like iron bars, very hard to break them, snap them. Inside lining of the artery, it's called the intima, 
all parent omega-6. So if you're taking fish oil, it gets incorporated there improperly. Mitochondria, you have more mitochondria than cells, could have hundreds to thousands of mitochondria per cell. In the inner layer of the mitochondria, it's called cardiolipin, all parent omega-6. And one of the big health guys on the internet was lying, saying there was omega-3 in there. It, the deception never stops. It's all parent omega-6. And there's articles, 2017, molecular biology publications. So the doctors never see it. They read publications like New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, The Lancet. I live in the physiology, molecular biology pool because I'm a researcher. So they never see this. They gave fish oil to people. 50% less activity in the mitochondria of the heart. Well, that means the heart doesn't have enough energy to pump. That's called congestive heart failure. And if you take fish oil, you are getting that. Mm -hmm. And the article went on to say the parent omega-6 rescues the damage from the fish oil. So it's all there if anybody would care to look. It goes on and on and on. It's horrible. But I'm sure you have some questions. I've given a little brief introduction to this. The parents are key. The derivatives are from the parents. They're the offspring. And technically, they're called icosanoids. They messenger between cells. They don't even have to hit the bloodstream. But they're very short-lasting minutes, and then they're gone. And... They're made as needed by the body. Now, you can have an impairment into how it's needed. We can talk about that. But that's all on the omega-6 side, not the omega-3. Nobody has anything to worry about with omega-3. That whole series and side is very weak compared with the omega-6 side. Everything is parent omega-6, unadulterated, fully functional, organic, or if you have a processed oil from the commercial supermarket you're cooking in, it's like eating plastic. So how can a cell membrane work if it's plasticized? Well, for example, insulin tries to get into the cell membrane. It bounces off because it's a plastic membrane because it's been processed. Gee, could that be called insulin resistance? I think it has something to do with it. So it's all predictable. And we just keep getting worse and worse and worse in spite of better medicine, better technology, better science better medical equipment, everything. Why do we keep getting worse in spite of everything? Nobody's asking this question. It all starts with the oils. They are fundamental to everything because they're incorporated in the cell. Okay, so that's a very quick overview. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but also on the omega-6 side. So, you know, we end up when we hear that this is the, the pro-inflammatory. It's the... Uh, Yes. PGE1. Um, With the pro-inflammatory in 2008, the American Heart Association said this is nonsense. Once again, nobody reads this. The American Heart Association, how they could not read it, and said anybody saying it's pro-inflammatory has a woeful understanding of physiology. I think they read some of my work, whoever the consultant was with the, <laughs> with the FDA on this, or the American uh, Heart Association, rather. Uh it is not pro-inflammatory. There's always two things. There's inflammatory, pro-inflammatory, and anti-inflammatory. You need them both. For example, I cut myself with a knife. You better have inflammation initially. It's called acute inflammation because that signals the body to get to repair things. The problem we have today is called chronic daily inflammation where that inflammation never subsides. It stays on, on, on. And what's it doing? It's sucking oxygen. Whenever there's inflammation, you are sucking the oxygen. That's why people are tired when they have injuries, because all the oxygen is being used to try and repair it. But that inflammation is supposed to subside pretty quickly, and it doesn't. And you hit it right in the head, PGE1. It's called prostaglandin series one. It's right at the top of the chain with the parent omega-6, it's called delta-6 desaturase, and then it goes, excuse me, right to PGE-1, which is the body's number one anti-inflammatory. That's why it's called PGE-1. It 
It's also a vasodilator, so it increases blood flow. But this is the key. We have too much inflammation, and inflammation is recognized today as the number one cause of all disease. Even cancer, for example. Weinberg at MIT, who came up with the oncogene, said he was wrong back in 2010. There is not enough genetic mutations to cause cancer. In his book, One Renegade Cell, it's called Inflammation Takes Center Stage. Nobody I've ever talked to even saw it. It's all genetic, genetic, genetic garbage. There's virtually no genetic component in cancer. But Brian, the BRCA gene, that's garbage too. The majority of people with the so-called BRCA gene don't get, don't get cancer. So it goes on and on and on. You don't need to worry about genetic problems if you're getting these right oils. The odds of that being a real problem is pretty darn small because if it was that big of a problem, you'd probably be dead. So the oils are critical. If you're not getting the parent omega-6 in an unprocessed form, you are not going to get enough PGE-1 and your body is going to be inflamed all the time. And down the same pathway is what's called PGI-2, which is prostacyclin. That's your body's natural blood thinner. So it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It keeps the platelets from sticking together. It keeps the blood cells from sticking to an artery. It keeps the blood clots so they don't happen under control. And it's so obvious if you understand this, but I see article after article just completely missing it. And fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, which fails all the time. It was just in uh, Harvard uh, just last week or two weeks ago, said fish oil fails in everything. It's worthless. It does not help heart disease. It does not help dementia. It doesn't help Alzheimer's. It doesn't help anything. And it's for the reasons that I already told you. Seven milligrams a day is all you need. And one capsule is 600. And people are being told to take four of them. And it's doing nothing. It's like the tank is already full, people. Overfilling well, your gas tank is just wasting gas and energy. And in this case, it's not just wasting money. It goes bad in the body fast. And all your antioxidants are getting used in the wrong place, which is putting you at great risk everywhere else. But well, PG, not, even, not even in the body, sorry to interrupt you, not even in the body, but once that fish oil actually hits the oxygen that's in the air, it has been known to end up and go rancid. Yep. At room temperature. So it's not it, even it, once it we're consuming rancid. it, it is just simply sitting in at the body. Room, and, you're right. You're right. At room temp, never mind 98.6, which is what we are it goes rancid even worse. You never cook with fish oil. You never cook with flax oil. It's too reactive. DHA has six double bonds. Flax oil has three double bonds. The omega-6 side has two. And the two double bonds are very unreactive compared with three and six double bonds. So it goes up. It's not linear. It's not one double bond. It's a third more or two thirds more. It goes up by factors two full, three full, six fold. So the more of this garbage you take, the faster you're killing yourself. But people go, Brian, I had a patient take it and he was, he, you know, he, he felt better. Initially, if you're short of the parents, you're going to be short of derivatives. So for a month, for a week, yeah, you can get a positive effect. But if you stay on fish oil long term, you are killing yourself. It's like a steroid. Is a steroid good short term? Yeah, but you ask any doctor long term, you will kill the patient. They never have you on steroids long term. You'll die. Uh, and they all know this. Now, what do steroids do? They completely shut down DFA pathways. So there's no signaling at all. So yeah, your pain will go down, but you're dying. Is that a good trade off? Well, if you think so, I can't help you. But the answer is no, there's much better ways. Maximize PGE-1 and nobody looks at it. So the science is very, very consistent. There's no case where the oils are not good for somebody. Um, skin conditions, phenomenal. Laser sharp attention. Your kid has ADD, ADHD. Uh, they need the parent oils in the brain. They're signaling modulators. And it's just unbelievable. Skin your skin becomes just like glass. It's unbelievable. 
I beat most 20 year old women's skin because anywhere I go to lecture, I go, let me do the test. I just put my, my, my finger, you know, right between the thumb and forefinger. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, because there's typically no moisturizer or anything there. And I said, this is my skin, feel mine. Then they give me this look of horror on their face because <laughs> I typically beat them. My wife takes the oils, of course, three times softer skin than me, never uses moisturizers, never has to use anything. Fingernails are perfect. Uh, people just marvel at her skin. They say, we got a secret. <laughs> you just need to know about it. So this is the biggest beauty secret in the world. It's also incredible for athletes. The energy goes through the roof. They're cellular oxygenators. Parent Omega-6 is a cellular oxygenator. And everybody, number one complaint of Americans is I'm tired. I have no energy, no energy. Well, whether they take fish oil or not, fish oil is just an enormous negative. But if they're not getting the right oils, and it's hard to get them in the right ratios today because of all the food processing and what we do, you just don't have the energy. I mean, you should need about five hours of sleep a night. You should have laser attention. I mean, when I was writing my books, I'd be up at 4.30 in the morning, go to bed at midnight, seven days a week. No problem. Just boom, boom, boom. You give this to your kid. It's like the Energizer Bunny. It's unbelievable. Well, and that's where I know we've talked about, you know, different diets, meat heavy diets, um, but also the the higher fat side of things um, and getting some of those in as well. But one of the biggest things, I guess, you know, in, in the slides that you were presenting in Salt Lake was the fact of the kidney um, mitochondrial damage in regards. And in that slide, it had talked Stocky, about the huh? enzymatic the enzymatic function in regards to fish oils versus even beef tallow. And I can, I'm someone that does consume a lot of the beef tallow, the beef or the animal source fats. Um, of course, making sure it's good quality, making sure, you know, all of those. Um, and I understand that we may not be able to get everything um, through food, uh, through bioavailable sources. I know that's a big controversial subject with a lot of people in regards of supplements, um, but also the aspect of just the 85% enzymatic loss or kidney function, I should say, um, when fed fish oil. That is one of the biggest things is the kidney function. Yeah, it's not going to work. That That's what happens. It's just like the mitochondria function was 50% decreased. And it raises your blood sugar too. So if you're a diabetic, five studies were done all raising the blood sugar levels. And the diabetic doctors don't know this. Now, most of the diabetic doctors I talk to are not recommending fish oil anymore. So I think they've learned it. I think they put their patient on it and they come back and the results stink. And <laughs> they, they make a change, but this is already in the literature in 1987. As I recall, Dr. Crockett did, did quite a few studies with fish oil and patients and made it worse. You mentioned fat. Any food fat, make sure you get natural or organic because that's where all the residues, the pesticides, the hormones go in the body to be stored. So bacon eggs, cheese, cream, spend the money on organic or natural with no pesticides, no preservatives, no hormones, no antibiotics. That's where you spend the money. Uh, the fruits and vegetables are down the list. You know, the pesticides are a problem, but the fat stores are the worst. So make sure any cooking oil is organic, unprocessed, Organic is the best because you don't want the chemicals in there. Just cold process by itself typically isn't sufficient. So anything I recommend is always organic from beginning to end. I just don't want the problems. And the results are just spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. The right combination of oils, by the way, also takes away a lot of the crave carvings. It's not an appetite suppressant. I, I don't like that word. If you need your appetite suppressed, something's wrong with you. You want it naturally fulfilled. For example, I had a steak. Could eat about a half a pound, three quarters of a pound of steak. I'm stuffed. I don't want any more. You do it with carbs, but you can't eat just one. Eat a half bag of potato chips. I want a full bag. You're nonstop. That's called positive feedback. What you want is negative feedback. The more I eat, the less I want. So that's a natural effect. 
and the oils have so much nutritional density, they naturally fulfill the appetite. So you're not a human billy goat eating five times a day. Anybody eating more than three times a day, diabetic time bomb. Get a bull, get a <laughs> get a dartboard, take your picture, put it in the bullseye. Diabetic time bomb because your pancreas is made to produce insulin twice a day. Never hear anybody talking about this either. Twice a day, you start doing because it doesn't store it. it, stores very little. You go on it a third time, there's no store. Now your blood sugar levels stay high and you're just going to kill your pancreas. You keep doing that 20 years later, you have no pancreas left or type one. You'll be shooting insulin because a long enough time, all type twos will go to type one and you don't want to be doing it. My wife is type one and it's a pain in the neck. It's very difficult to control it. And uh, this happened, you know, when she was in her thirties before we even knew about the oils, but the oils help her with uh, less retinopathy less neuropathy, much less, no, virtually no neuropathy. Uh, you get kidney failure. This is so protective that it should be required in any protocol, any protocol. So beyond just the organic meats, um, if someone was looking at optimizing their, their nutritional window, um, before I, before I let my co-host jump in with her, her diabetic questions here, uh, what would you suggest as far as, okay, so they're looking at getting the grass fed, grass finished, the organic meats, uh, chicken. Yeah. As long as it's natural and doesn't, doesn't have the steroids and hormones, you can live with that. You go up to organic, it's going to cost you a few bucks more. Mm -hmm. And if it gets price, it gets price prohibitive pretty quickly. But the biggest thing is no steroids, no hormones, and no additives. If you can afford organic, all the better. That's the biggest thing. And then again, anything that has natural fat in it, like the eggs, cheese, bacon, butter, you don't want the additives in that either. Those are number one. And even if you can't get meat that doesn't, that has the hormones and steroids like a steak the more well done you make it the more those chemicals are what's called denatured the heat destroys them so they don't work so it's not much of a problem i did a test and paid a lab to analyze it and i like steak on the well done side you know all the chefs look at me like i'm nuts but it turned out there was a big good good reason it, it, it got rid of most of the problems in the meat but you don't have to cook it to shoe leather. You just need to cook the heck out of it. But if you get the natural or the organic, you can have it rare if you want. You can have, you know, raw if you want. It, it just doesn't matter. That's the biggest bang for the buck. Veg, fruits and vegetables, if you can afford organic, I always do at the store. Um, you just don't want that stuff on there. It's very pro problematic with what it does to your body. It's getting a constant onslaught of poisons. So it's lack of a negatives, not, not that there's more vitamins in there. Everybody looks at the wrong thing when you get organic. I don't want the negatives. There's two things. There's big negatives like trans fats, processed cooking oils, a negative 20. A zero is it just doesn't harm me. The parent EFAs are a positive 20. So there's a range. But you don't want to take anything that's giving you that negative 20. That's the problem today. Everything is an onslaught of negatives, negatives, negatives. And so what oils or fats would you end up and suggest them cooking with or getting? Or cooking, um, monounsaturated are, are good. Like avocado oil, organic avocado oil is a superb oil to fry in, even deep fry because its smoke point is 440 degrees. So it's real high. Olive oil is good for sauteing. You can do light frying in it, but I wouldn't deep fry in it. People do. Uh, you can use sunflower oil. You can use grapeseed oil. There's a lot. There. And they're all omega-6. Nobody fries an omega-3 containing oils. So they know they're too reactive. You put heat on it, you get a problem. But they don't go to the next step. What's happening when they're in the body and, you know, fish oil is being ruined. Okay, I'm not heating it up in a pan. Now, you can eat fish. That's a very different issue. Fish oil is a processed food. If you eat the fish, a lot of the oil's out of it when you cook it. The little bit you get is no big deal. But Brian, they eat sushi. They don't live on a ton of it. You don't need a pound of sushi. 
They don't eat a half a pound of sushi. You have a few bites. Like over in Italy, they don't have this plate full of spaghetti. I've been there. <laughs> they have a little thing. It's not like what people are led to believe. We're highly misled. Over in the Orient, they don't live on soy. I've been in China, Japan, Thailand. Soy sauce is very little. Tofu is very little. They're not saying it's a meat replacer because it's a processed food. And by the way, soy is food for a pig. I lecture in Iowa extensively. If you ever smelled raw soy ground up, you would get sick to your stomach and never touch it. When I say soy is food for a pig, don't touch soy oil. It's a complete endocrine disruptor. It's horrific. Guys absolutely don't want it. Women don't want it either. But soy is everywhere because it's cheap. Food for farm animals, food for a pig. They're doing it. They get it. But they're, they're pawning it off on us. So there's just so much to know. I have a website people can look at things called brianpeskin.com. It's just my name. And there's actually a whole program on there, Becky, that uh, mm -hmm. I think it's called Healthy Body with Science. And it's real inexpensive. All my books, all my reports, soy fiction, uh, you know, all this kinds of stuff will just knock you on your tail. And it's like $29.95. We made it at such a low price everybody can afford to get this and find exactly what you're looking for there's the hidden story of cancer that's incredible about Otto warburg's work there's peo solution that talks about these oils there's 24-hour diet that talks about what you want to do when you eat and they all have the same fundamentals of course but the focus is different they're all completely consistent but people care more about one thing than another typically and i try and put it in that way but everything is physician verified scientifically verified people have got to check it out so it's just brian peskin you know b-r-i-a-n p as in park e-s-k-i-n.com because i want people having the science so they understand things i'm not big on brian followers i appreciate it but i want you understanding the science and i've done the work so you don't have to it's like an electric switch do you need to know electromagnetic wave theory no you put the switch on and the light lights up, the computer goes on. It's all I need to know. I'm an electrical <laughs> engineer, so I'm joking. I do know that stuff. It's highly complicated. You don't want to. But I've done all the work for you living in the medical library, actually, at MD Anderson Medical Center. That was my hidden story of cancer. They were kind enough to let me live there for four years. And I wasn't on the faculty or anything, but they let me be in the in the stacks. 330,000 medical volumes are what is there. So anybody's saying there's so much we don't know. The Lancet back to 1850, I actually touched it. And they did know what cancer was in 1900. It's real simple to tell because it's such a mess. So anybody's saying we didn't know back then, we didn't track back then. Yeah, they did. They tracked all kinds of stuff in America in 1900, believe it or not. And they knew what this stuff was. And you can go and get this. Now everything's online. But back when I was doing all this research, you know, 20, 20 years ago, uh, I would just live there and I'd get home with an article and I'm not big on references or references. So I see a reference. I got to get the reference and make sure the article is proper in what they said, because more often than not, you'll read a headline and the article didn't say it. It's made up and there's no verification. It's like what's going on in politics. They just don't care and like what's going on with that idiot on the internet with the health thing with the mitochondria, cardiolipin is all omega-3. They just say it and that's it. No reference. So anybody listening, get used to asking very specific questions like what is the metabolic pathway and where did that come from? Textbook of medical physiology, basic medical biochemistry, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, where did this come from? Or is this guy just making it up? And more often than not, they just make it up. That's why I walked out of the nutrition department at, at the university and went into the pharmacy department. You know, I said to the president, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. The average person has no hope. It is absolutely yeah. hopeless. I mean, this is all I do. It's my job. But the problem with the web is somebody could be 80% right. It's the 20% wrong, and then you can't tell where that 20% wrong is. But with oils, with EFAs, they're all wrong because every one of them is a parrot. Nobody is giving you the truth. Nobody understands what the hell they're talking about. 
And my comment is, if you don't understand what you're talking about, shut up. I'm very, very brutal when people are giving wrong information because if you do it, you're killing people. And if I'm wrong, shoot me. I mean, that's my standard. I won't say something until I verified it 10 times. This is the way Otto Warburg was. He wouldn't publish an experiment until it was verified. You know how many times an experiment is verified in medicine today? Zero. And the comments are, we're not paid to verify anything because they want to all get these experiments. Oh, this is great for anti-cancer. I get it. Try it. Hey, Becky, it totally failed. Oh, uh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. They get paid to do it once. They get lucky on something and it just happens to work. You need to know statistics, but they use 95% confidence intervals, which means you do an experiment 20 times. You're going to get it looking like it works and it's complete failure. So that happens all the time. So yeah. if I can interject something sure. that, um, of course, MD Anderson, by the way, is in my backyard. Me um, too. I'm so, in Houston. So I'm in Houston. Well, I'm I'm in Katy. Uh, so uh, it's my backyard, right? Um, so, and I was uh, about a year and two years and nine months ago, I was put in the hospital for cellulitis. Right. Um and all they did was when they blamed my type 2 diabetes at the time of causing it, which we found out later it wasn't. However, what made me so mad in the hospital, and this is pre me uh, trying to get healthy and, you know, going down the, the healing journey that I've gone down. Uh, that was the start of it. But the food they fed me in the oh. hospital. <laughs> Holy a McDonald's there. And, you know, that's also here in Houston. So, I mean, it oh, was yeah. horrific. Well, it's all carbs, too. And the first thing anybody yeah. knows is carbs are the number one fuel of a cancer. This is known. It's published everywhere. How any organization. Well, it's cheap. Everything is about money today, unfortunately. And it's just tragic. I mean, carbs should be so restricted in anybody with cancer. It didn't cause the cancer, but it's the number one fuel that a cancer lives on because it's easy for the cancer to eat it. It doesn't require much, and cancer is a pretty dumb thing. It uh, it just survives and just keeps growing, but it doesn't really do anything. And it's real easy to eat a carb. That's why for humans, there's no nutrition in a carb just makes you fat because of the insulin response. Yeah, it goes right to sugar and gives you energy so an athlete can use it. But most people want very low carb diet or you get problems. Yeah, it's horrific what they feed they feed them. They yeah, it it was it was shocking. Um and like I said, that was the turning point that kind of woke me up with uh going down yeah. my healing path since i've reversed my type 2 diabetes i'm off the medication um yeah, pretty good good for you in, right i mean and i think it's epidemic in america type 2 diabetes everybody's on the path to it never stops yeah yeah and the, and one of the things that you know when you started out my doctor for many many years prescribed fish oil they all took, do. Yeah. And I took that for years and um, I ran across uh, in my quest to heal. I ran across you uh, about two and a half years ago, two years ago. Um, yeah, and the book is in the library at MD Anderson. They, they, uh, I got off the, I, I, I quit taking there. the fish oil, right? Like I threw it out. And, um, and, and it confirmed it with when Becky, when you were speaking in Utah, uh, and Becky was sending me screenshots of your presentation, Shocked all that did up. was confirm right. I did right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's nice to see the science, you know, yeah. but no, nobody gets this. There's just nobody out there. I'm the number one anti-fish oil guy probably in the world. And people hate me. I hate my guts because of it, because they're losing a lot of money and people are coming to them. Hey, this guy's saying this. Now they got to defend themselves and they can't because they're wrong. So it's got to be very bad for them, but they don't care. They have no conscience today. Nobody has a conscience. The other, the reason for this, they have no blood flow. So in the frontal lobe, you have no blood flow. You can't think you have no reaction time and you have no empathy. Um, 
you look at how people drive today in the past two years, they're lunatics. They wait an hour and a half to even pull out in the traffic because their eye hand coordination is so bad. I'm not saying to do things dangerously, but my goodness, you don't need a half a mile clear down the road with no car coming before you inch out. You know, 20 car lengths is plenty. It's they just wait and wait and wait. They have no eye hand coordination. It's horrible. These oils change everything. We call it the athlete's advantage. It, it's it's so profound for them. Well, so how long does that stay in your system? So I like I said, I oil, been, 18 yeah. weeks to get most of it out of the cell membrane. Mm -hmm. uh, th this was done with studies. They could do radioisotope testing. You radiate it and just see when it's gone. But it's about 18 weeks. Thank goodness it's only four and a half months. It's not like stuck in you for years. And remember that fish oil displaces the important parent omega-6. So it's in there. Your body just doesn't burn up the excess. It can't do it. It can oxidize some fats like saturated fats for energy. It'll burn those up first. But with the fish oil, you're taking such a super pharmacologic overdose. Body can't burn it up. Gets improperly put into the tissue. And this is called lipofuscin. That's the age spots. So Dr. Rowan sent me this too. With monkeys taking fish oil, they had the age spots in their liver inside the body. So just as bad as the outside is, so is the inside and nothing's working. So when people stop fish oil, they start feeling better and better. And then they put in my oils, what I recommend. And it's like, ba-boom. Well, and going back to that melanoma and the, the age spots, um, we're talking not only quote fish oil, right? We're talking krill oil. We're talking cod liver oil. We're any marine based oil. Any, yes. Any of them. So yeah. just being specific, we're not just narrowing no. this down to your fish oil capsule that you're getting, yeah. you know, over the counter. We're no, talking. The, the, no, no. The market's so big for fish oil. Where do you think they're getting fish oil from? Spoiled fish. Where did you mm -hmm. think this whole market came from? Came from, I have fish I can't sell to the top restaurants in town. What the heck can I do with this garbage? I juice a fish, you get fish oil. It's juice fish. But now they have, yeah, krill, super squid. I mean, green mustard. You know, it's one thing after another to try and differentiate themselves. All that matters is the amount of it. I had one doctor trying to get me to be on board with his krill oil. I said, I can say it's less of a poison than fish oil. Is that okay? <laughs> I'm being very facetious because I wanted nothing to do with it. But doesn't matter. It's all marine oil and we don't need it. We have enough of it. It stays around. The antioxidants in your brain, the same DHA stays there for two and a half years. That's how you go. How, how can seven milligrams a day be enough? Because you don't need to turn it over that fast. So you have enough antioxidants to make that happen, believe it or not. In other areas, you don't. Turns over much quicker. It's a different deal. But brain cells stay much longer than you would think. It's interesting, huh? This is all out there, but you got to look for it. And you could do radioisotope testing to get it. But again, I've never seen anybody talk about this, especially the fish oil people, because they want to give you no science. And here's another one. Studies aren't science. Studies should confirm the science, not be opposite to it. Like taking more DHA, I would first say, I don't see how it can do anything for you. And then if the study came out, it did, I'd be appalled. So the study should show it doesn't like it doesn't. I'm going through all some old medical journal articles, and it's just one after another from last five to ten, you know, five years to 10 years, starting five years ago. Fish oil fails, fish oil fails, fish oil fails, but you put enough money with advertising and people forget. Mm -hmm. Got to start demanding science. All this stuff on TV is lunacy. They never give you metabolic pathways. Yes, our team of doctors designed this. Good for you. What did they design? Oh, there's always fish oil in it. There's some garbage for pain. Of course, it's got fish oil in it. That's does nothing for PGE-1. Very, very mild anti-inflammatory initially and then long term it's a huge inflammatory because it's going rancid in your body so you're gonna have inflammation everywhere i saw one guy doctor he was talking about well when they did the essential fatty acid things in 1929 with burr and burr they were looking in the skin of animals that's all they looked at and i'm looking at this guy going 
your skin is hellacious. You have an EFA deficiency because that's the first place it shows up in horrific skin. This is why babies have a lot of skin problems. The pregnant moms that take the oils I recommend have no problems. It's the baby from heaven. They don't get sick. They don't have any of the skin issues. You know, the pediatricians are just amazed with them. Here's the problem. Any pregnant women need to know this. Nature's brutal. It takes all the EFAs out of you and shoves them into the kid. This is why a pregnant woman is on her tail for a year after she spits out the kid. No energy. Skin is going to be a mess. Just exhausted all the time because nature gave the baby all the good EFAs and left you with a deficiency of junk. And that's the proof. And this is all known. And no OBGYNs telling women to take the parent oils. I don't know what they're telling them to do, but they're not telling them to do that. It's tragic. People need to really get the science, and that's why I put together my program. So one of the other um, areas to go into, we kind of briefly talked about the the heart and what it um, can do and ruin that cardiac mitochondria. Um, yep. But also, what about, so say they're taking fish oils. They're also, I mean, a lot of heart, heart patients are also taking statins, right? Um, yeah. what can they end up and do in this realm of, of cardiac support? Yeah, well, statins than... don't, don't work well at all. That's known. It's all, all in the medical journals, you know, that, that con job is pretty much over, but it doesn't stop the, the sales. You know, the numbers don't go down. So even when something is published saying this is worthless, once a doctor's on board prescribing it, they don't change. They don't care what comes out saying it's no good. Of course, unless it kills you, but then the FDA pulls the drug. So it's not even the doctor there. As long as the drug's on the market, they prescribe it. But it's really, really tragic what, what's going on. Yeah, It's hard. It you is. need to get these oils in you is the best thing for a cardiac patient to fix the mitochondria, to make it where the hardening of the arteries, you want the artery very flexible like a balloon. And these oils do that. They also make it where the platelets, like I said, don't coagulate, don't stick to an artery, don't stick together. There's nothing better a heart person can take than the kind of formulation I recommend. And it's all talked about in my program. Um, for a heart issue, it is the number one thing. It's complementary with any drug your, your, your physician is giving you because these are foods. And, uh, they're complementary with anything. There's no contraindications at all. It's, it's, it's just superb the way they work. And it's relatively fast. It takes about a year to get all the bad EFAs out of you. It takes time. You know, the trans fats, all the garbage people are eating. So what happens is you get better and better and better going up a nice peak. And, th and then you'll level off. But when you level off, you're excellent. But for a year, you just get better and better and better, less and less tired. And you sleep like a log when you get tired. You know, typically people, I'm tired at 9 p.m. And then it goes, you take the oils, 10 p.m. And then 10.30, maybe 11 midnight. And when you hit that pillow, three minutes, you're gone. Mm -hmm. I know so many people, I can't fall asleep. I can't. You know, something's really wrong with you. you know, I sleep you like a baby. <laughs> you should. Perfect. You should. Yeah. But... You should fall asleep fast. Exactly. But I also want to end up and be respectful of your time. And I know we're running up to our hour here. So briefly end up and recap as far as uh, being able to, and I'll, I'll go into the, the opposite form, um, but being able to end up and get these parent omegas in uh, the omega sixes in uh, through alpha linoleic acid. So the ALA. Um, That'll give you the omega three side, but not yeah. enough to be omega-6 side. It's three to one, three and a half to one. Like flax oil is three and a half to one. Parent omega-3 to omega-6, so it's backwards. So flax oil is good as a component, but you better know what you're doing. So I'm real big on supplements. I don't mention yeah. them when I'm doing interviews because I talk nope. disease. But if anybody wants to drop me an email, I can tell you what I well. use. I was just saying, that's one of the things my mentor ends up and talks about. I'm I'm not always big on supplements, even though I've got essential oils and supplements behind me. Supplements have their time and their place and their purpose. And one of my yeah. mentors talks about pure form omegas. Um, so I know that that's is a, a good one. Quality I know that. Thing. 
Um, I know that many people end up and use that. It is a fish free. It's not going to end up and have the fish oils. It's going to end up and be a reputable company. It is a quality, uh, clean product. It's, it's, it's the right ratios. Everything yeah. with this is the ratios. And then you need evening primrose in it to get GLA so it can bypass the Delta six, the saturase step because anybody with diseases or disorders has an impairment in that metabolic pathway and this compensates for it to produce that pge1 to give you that anti-inflammatory response because if people are getting bad oils this came out in 2017 the cells sense they're screwed up and goes into chronic inflammation mode believe it or not they can tell and everybody is chronically inflamed and this is the biggest problem in america today but pure form has the right ratios i've looked at it Everything about them is first rate. Now, I will say I do have some that the they can't handle supplements. And that's where I really end up and do push more of the smash. So things like the salmon, the mackerel, anchovy, sardines, herring, you know, more of those fattier fish to end up and be able to get it in, get at least the other, you know, omegas in there. Um, yeah, it's because, better. It's better. Because it's better than nothing, right? So if that's their only option, um, and I know we had a comment that said, what, what do you recommend? And I know, like I said, the, you have it on your website as far as what you would end up and recommend. And I put that link. It is uh, brianpeskin.com. But um, with yeah, they that really being, need to get the uh, Healthy Bodywood Science Program. So they understand why this is so important. People know more about their car, how it works, than they know how they work. It's, it, it, it's tragic. You know, it's worth the time to learn this stuff because the schools don't give it to you. Their, their nutrition is garbage and it's all politicized and it's all wrong. It, it's, it's tragic. So, you know, I spent a lot of time putting that program together. It's got 20 years of my work in it. $29 or something like that. And nobody can afford not to have it. So is that program going to end up and tell them um, kind of, or give them a guideline as far as how many of the parent um, uh, essential oils they should end up and have? I don't think so because no specific brand is in there, but I like about three grams a day for a 160 pound person is real good. You don't need a lot, which is a half a teaspoon. So a 200 pound, 250 pound person, a teaspoon does it. That little of these oils, if they're in the right ratios, goes so far to fixing so much. It's unbelievable. But they can always go to the info line. And like I said, Pure Form is one. You know, there's other companies that do it right, but they're if you went in between, mm -hmm. if you went in between. Well, Miss Sherry, any other any other questions? Um, I know this is definitely information we could go on forever, but like I said, I do want to be respectful of your time also. So I got enough. Can only get so much of this at once. <laughs> and even the doctors, they don't know what an EFA is. Central fatty acid that they they don't learn this in medical school. They don't know. So how on earth can you expect them to tell you what's right? Very few do. I come across one out of a hundred even knows what that term means. They just don't care. And you're on your own today, unfortunately. And if people don't want to make the investment in the time, I can't help you. I mean, I spent my life giving you all the info you need. And it's 35 physicians. They can look at the, the thing and uh, there's 35 physicians there and there's a hundred patient testimonials. That's not good enough for you. I don't know what nobody got gets paid anything for those. Um, the doctors are all different fields, just talking about the quality of the work. I mean, there's nothing in the world like this. It, it, it really is just incredible. It took me four years to write Hidden Story of Cancer, living at MD Anderson's medical library. And it's, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. Translated into two other languages, even in Dutch, they sold 7,000 copies. Country the size of Rhode Island, 7,000 copies in the Netherlands alone. It's it's uh, shocking. They translated. It took a year to translate. <laughs> and, uh, it's all there. Very and good. How is, MD, how is MD Anderson with the 
with your research? Did they take it and run with it? Because I, uh, I had a top uh, surgeon. He just retired a couple of years ago, Dr. Rob. He was uh, chair of plastic reconstructive surgery, and he would give it to a pile of the patients undergoing surgery, and their recuperation was just superb. Wow. But that was him. Do other doctors follow it? Typically not. They do drugs. They prescribe drugs, and if it's not a drug, most don't want to hear about it. That's just mm -hmm. the way it is. But yeah, he had, uh, I believe, over 100 patients, phenomenal results. Any kind of surgery, any kind of injuries, your pain, your, your, you can't afford not to have these oils. They're what nature made to help. And again, it's complimentary with any drug you may be taking, but you can't afford not to use these oils. It's just the biggest bang for the buck on the planet. So one of the other things that real quick, what that you talked about was the oxygen magnets as far as the parent omega oils. Um, parent omega six, yeah, and the cell membrane. Yep, oxygen magnets. So what is your feeling in regards of like hydrogen? Because one of the other things that we talk about is hydrogen water. Um, I've heard of it. I I don't know anything about it. So like I said, I don't open my mouth on what I don't know. If you've tried it, what I care about is does it work in clinical practice? If you give it to 10 people, will eight of them say, hey, it does work? 80% is great. That's what I look for in a success because you can always get two that have a genetic problem or you don't know what their problems are or what they're eating, what they're doing. But if you get eight out of 10, you got a winner. So that's my, does it work? I'll ask you. Yeah. For yeah. many, as I say, for many of us that are using it, um, Dr. Paul uh, Barreto was another presenter at the Live It to yeah. conference. And for many of us, I've, I've used it for well over two years. Okay. Um, I've Thanks just now winner. started, you know, sharing it with our community. And so, yeah, it is working for us. Um, what does it, tip what's it typically do? It provides energy. Um, yeah. That is one of the biggest things that I end up when I see, but I also see it in glucose control, um, right. which is kind of where I was tying it in also with the fish oils, right? Because we end up when we see, the insulin resistance, we see that side of things when it comes to the glucose metabolism, yeah. but we are also seeing it with being able to get the hydrogen into the cell, get, you know, it, it's all about the cell, right? So when yeah. we're talking about the cell in the mitochondria, that's what we have to look at. It's not just, okay, this is, you know, our body. Uh, we really got to break that thing down. And that's, again, where many like you said, many physicians aren't looking at it. They are just looking at your symptoms and here, you know, right. here's a, here's a pill for this symptom. Here's a pill for this symptom. Oh, yeah. those are causing this, you know, now we got to end up and give you this. And I was one, I was on seven different medications. Wow. I have now since been able to come off of everything and reverse it. So, impressive. you know, looking at things on that cellular level, but um, I appreciate you and any last things that you want to end up and share with our audience, um, other than going to brianpeskin.com, uh, looking at your stuff, getting your, uh, product. The program. Yeah. Program, it's, a, yes. it's a digital program. So you can download everything. No, just learn as much as you can. And EFAs are number one because they're physically incorporated into a hundred trillion cells and all the corresponding organs and tissues. So they actually are the brick and mortar along with all the messengers on top of it. So again, the biggest bang for the buck are EFAs, parent EFAs in the right ratios. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Good talking to you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.